It's not particularly exciting, and we are, I'm afraid, leaning into the B word now, inevitably, I think, given the, the, the state of the country. If you, again, if you're new to the program, you should know that my colleague Keith keeps a tin into which I have to put a pound every time I say the words I told you so in, in the context of Brexit. I'm, I'm thinking of abolishing that at the moment on the grounds of potential bankruptcy. I, I, don't, I don't think anyone would enjoy seeing me uh, under Charing Cross Bridge begging for, for, for loose change, which is likely to happen as, as Brexit continues to unfold and as the absolutely grimly predictable and predicted reality of, uh, of doing this thing uh, becomes ever harder to ignore. I, 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 I'll tell you what happened at the weekend. I was looking at all the stories about lorry drivers and the hospitality industry and uh, I, I mean, everywhere you go, there's a, it was a report about doctors feeling unwelcome. We've got a shortage of vets, I think. The, the, and, and it was occurring to me that really this is a conversation about people. I mean, politics is people, but this is about people. We have a shortage of people. The great tragedy of that regime, regime, that referendum campaign, was to introduce distinctions of people. So the idea became, thanks to people like Farage, that if you came from... Uh, a, a, another country, you were somehow worth less. I think they even started talking about quality people, didn't they? So you somehow, and this of course appeals enormously to, to people who don't come from foreign countries, but who do feel um, uh, uh, aggrieved or, or unappreciated or feel that their great talents and skills haven't been properly recognised by society. You can blame it on the presence not just the success, the simple presence of people who weren't born here. Now, that's a tragedy for a whole heap of reasons. But, but key is, of course, if you need something, then the urgency of your need as it increases, so any concern you may have about the nationality of the person that can deliver it or the geographical origins of the person that can deliver it should decrease. I mean, for some people, those horrible stories from the NHS about people not wanting to be treated... By, by foreign medics or, 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 I mean, certainly black doctors and Asian doctors over the years have told us horrible stories about that sort of thing. But I don't think that's representative of a broader tribe. I think that is a fair... I mean, you'd say, I, I, look, I'm really sick. I need treatment, but I don't want to be treated by a Capricorn or, or a Sagittarius. I only want to be treated by an Aries or a Pisces. That would be nuts. But there will be some people who are that nuts. I don't really want to talk about them today, and I certainly don't want to talk to them. What I'm drawn to is this burgeoning realisation that we shouldn't really have cared that much about where the lorry driver delivering food to our supermarket was born. And if he's delivering food to a supermarket in Basingstoke, it seems fairly reasonable that he should expect to live in Basingstoke and raise his family in Basingstoke and send his children to school in Basingstoke. Or Birmingham, or, or Dundee, or Manchester, or Kidderminster, or uh, fr fr Frodham, wherever it may be. If, if the nurse, or the lorry driver, or the care worker or the shop worker, or the person in an abattoir, or the person in a meat processing plant, or the veterinary surgeon, or the uh, wherever it is that they came from, if they're living and work, if they're working here, it seems reasonable that they should live here and expect to be treated with the same degrees of respect and uh, gratitude that the rest of us get. I, I can't believe I'm having to say that out loud in 2021, but you know these pennies take a while to drop. So what I was thinking at the weekend were, were two things. I was thinking, will these temporary visas that they're calling for work? I, for the record, the government have already said no. But I think it's fair to say that with this government saying no on a Monday does not mean that they will still be saying no by Tuesday or even Monday tea time. We've seen countless examples of, of, of so-called U-turns. This growing realisation that we are short of people is fascinating. And what I thought at the weekend was, why haven't we heard about social care? Again, I've been away for a fortnight, so you may have seen it sooner. And I mentioned it to my producer this morning. And she said, actually, it was a, there was a piece in The Telegraph yesterday about this. Foreign care workers should have their visas fast-tracked as, as providers warn of a looming deadline for double-jabbed carers triggering a staffing crisis. So that, that was my thought at the weekend. 
I th- well, I know we're short of lorry drivers, covering it on this program pretty much from the beginning of the year. I know that we're we're short of people working in processing plants. We're short of people uh, in in the sort of delivery and the supply chain. We're short of people almost everywhere now. Vacancies in the NHS, vacancies here, vacancies there, vacancies blooming everywhere. And given how much attention we've paid to social care, not just in COVID uh, and the uh, appalling. Uh, treatment they received in the first days of the pandemic but broader questions of course as well I remember Boris Johnson arrived on the steps of Downing Street and he became prime minister and told us he had a plan to fix social care he already had a plan he just hasn't got around to telling us what it is yet but you know the night is young I couldn't quite believe that we hadn't had a proper look at this lo and behold it's there so you need double jabbed foreign workers to to plug the gap of staff planning to quit ahead of the mandatory vaccination deadline. So you've got two things going on. People who are planning to quit because they will not accept mandatory vaccination. I think that's a a tragedy. I wish they just get vaccinated. Um, But a shortage of workers exacerbated hugely by the Brexit problems that we've already seen biting huge chunks out of the hospitality and catering sector and, and the haulage and supply chain sectors. So... 11.11 11.11 is the time. What's the question? Well, I, I, I want to ask a question that will allow interesting answers. So you can't say, forgive me, I know this probably upsets you a bit, but you can't just ring in and say we should train our own when you really don't know what you're talking about, okay? I don't want to do that job over there. I like doing this job. Now, the longer I've spent unemployed, the, the, the lower my bar will come. You know, I've got a family to support. So my first day unemployed, I am not going to take that job over there. I'm going to hang on in the hope of getting a job a little bit more commensurate with my enthusiasms and talents, whatever they may be. So this idea that well, we've got unemployed people, how can we have shortages in that sector over there? I- I'm really sorry if this offends you. That's just stupid. It's really, really stupid. OK. Equally saying, you know, bringing it down to a conversation about benefits. It's just like you've opted out of the 21st century. There's no shame in that. Parliament's full of politicians who've done the same. But we have a shortage of people. And I don't know how you fix that. I really don't. Freedom of movement of people struck half of the country as a wonderful, beautiful thing, and the other half of the country as the end of civilization as we know it. I think a large part of the problem was that you either saw it as something you could do or you saw it as something that other people do. And if you saw it as something that other people do, you largely saw it as something that people from other countries do. So they are free to come here and you have been told for 30 or 40 years that that is a bad thing. Not with any evidence really, but with such repeated certainty and with such sort of furious scaremongering that we all, many people came to believe it was true. Oh, it's a bad thing. There's too many of them here. We're a small country. There's too many of them here. We should train our own. And now we're seeing what happens when they just say, all right, see you then. There was an amazing piece. I think it was in the New York Times. One of the American, uh, prestigious American outlets, simply saying the British people voted to send these people home and now they've gone home. What are we going to do about it? And the short answer is I haven't got a Scooby-Doo. What are we going to do about it? Sector after sector after sector now calling for special dispensations for their sector. So if you're running a care home, you want people to come in and duck under some of Pretty Patel's requirements, have a temporary visa to work here. But I don't know what that means in the context of wanting to live here. And what, what sort of workers? The number of Turkish people applying for work in this country has quadrupled. You remember that Turkish people were held up as an example of uh, a, a reason to leave the European Union. You were told we must leave the European Union, otherwise loads of Turkish people are going to come here. Again, it was racist and unpleasant, but deeply effective. Upshot today, Daily Telegraph, again, oddly, uh, I, I read that the number of Turkish people applying for work here is quadrupled. So that Brexit argument, even if you were being a bit racist and uh, obnoxious towards Turkish people, that's completely backfired on you as well. The number of Turkish people applying to come here has gone up by 400%. I think that's the correct mathematical description of a quadrupling, isn't it? So I, I just don't know what happens next. And who can tell us? People who hire 
03456060973 is the number you need. Care workers in particular are interesting to me today. I don't think I want to open up the mandatory vaccine conversation. We keep something in store for later in the week. That's part of the problem. The key part of the problem is, in the words I think of the New York Times, and I should double check probably before I say it out loud on the radio, but it's too late now. The British people voted. I know not all of us did, but the British people voted to send them home. You heard caller after caller after caller on this program. Saying that's what they want. We should we should send them home. There's too many of them. We can't cope. There's too many of them. So we voted to send them home. And now they've gone home. And, well, it's not exactly going well, is it? How do we fix that? 0345 973 I'll take some theoretical answers, but I do demand at least a modicum of thoughtfulness. You, you, you can't ring in and start talking to me about unicorns or technological solutions. Those ships have sailed. How, how do we fix a shortage of people? 0345 960 And if you have made your home here, having been born somewhere else, talk to me, if you would, about the offer. That's the phrase, isn't it, that they use? The, 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 what, what does the invitation look like? Freedom of movement of people meant you come here and you are in law the same as me, someone who was born here. Fast track visas or, or, or temporary loosenings of regulations. I, I, I don't think you'd have come. Oh, yes, you can come over here. You can, you can wipe our bottoms in our care homes and then you can sod off back to where you came from. Thank you very much. I don't buy that as an offer or an invitation. I think we might be knocking once again at the door of um, exceptionalism. I really do. But there is a shortage of people. Uh, and that can't be fixed by increasing wages. And that will be a, 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 you know, a, an attempt. But all that does is move someone from one job to a job where he's going to get paid more or she's going to get paid more. And all of these people suddenly discovering a desire to see wages increase have oddly spent all of their lives opposed to trade union membership. Trade unions exist to increase the wages and the working conditions of the workforce. So we could be forgiven for not buying that line of argument particularly or taking that in good faith. How do you fix a shortage of people? 03456060973. How do we fix this shortage of people? Because... Whether you like it or not, and obviously I don't like it, but whether you voted for it or not, and obviously I didn't vote for it, and whether you recognise this description of the Brexit vote or not, and obviously I do, but I fully accept lots of people voted for Brexit who, who didn't want this to happen, we voted to send these people home. They've gone home, and now we've got shortages right across the board. We have a shortage of people. What are we going to do about it? Hit the numbers now, you will get through. Everyone can join in on this one. I, I'm personally particularly interested to hear from employers. What are you going to do? I don't think I want to relitigate that argument. I, I, it may not have been you, but a heck of a lot of people voted in 2016 to, to reduce the number of Europeans in this country, to, to, to reduce the number of foreigners in this country. Whether it was to send them home or stop them coming seems to me to be moot. Um, not, not everybody, I stress fully, absolutely fully, not everybody who voted Brexit is racist, but everybody who is racist was in favour of Brexit. It's a crucial distinction to, to draw. We now have shortages of people almost everywhere. Uh, it doesn't matter where those people come from. There is a shortage of people. That's not an opinion, that's counting. What can we do about it? 03456060973. The other question that I would invite you to answer is, is the simple one. How bad is it where you are? How bad is it where you are? And remember that improving wages doesn't create people. OK, so some companies will be poaching staff from other companies with golden hellos. But that means other companies just take up the same shortage. And if you're talking about the food supply chain, then Financial Times reported yesterday, you, you, you know this already, um, long period of subdued prices in this country is coming to an end. So the UK retail trade has signalled the prospect of higher food prices for the foreseeable future, which, of course, everybody who was voting for cheaper food, as promised by people like Jacob Rees-Mogg, actually secretly knew that food was actually going to be more expensive. Hmm. But what do we do about a shortage of people? 03456060973. Karen is in Bromley. Karen, what do you reckon? Hi. Uh, first of all, please be gentle because out of all the presenters, you scare me the most. Rawr. So, <laughs> you're ruthless. So I'm a domiciliary carer as well as I started my own recruitment agency for, for childcare 
March this year. Oh, crikey. And I think we need to encourage our youngsters. They don't need to go to university. If we can help them to become apprentices, but with decent salaries. Apprentices are paid about £4.85 an hour doing the same work as, you know, somebody who's, you know, of a mature age. And it's quite insulting to pay people that sort of salary. Also, when people leave but university... I, I, need, I, I, I hear you, and we will explore this a little bit further, but, and it's probably my fault for not being clearer. I kind of want to get something fixed by Christmas. Right. Well, you can't, basically. We have to be realistic. So what's going to happen then? Come, well, people coming out of university with a level six in childcare are not getting jobs because they're too expensive. They're looking for salaries of 23,000 plus. Oh, I, thought, I think you three, just said, and this is why you think I'm scary, it's probably my mistake that I've misunderstood <laughs> you. I thought you were just saying we should be paying them more. No, no, no. No. What we've got to do is be realistic with our youngsters. When you mentioned being, you know, and you mentioned the carers wiping bottom. Yes. We do an awful lot more than that. Oh, well, I know I you do. No, you. I'm crikey, I didn't mean to suggest for a minute no, that no, you no. don't. I was just picking the bit that I would struggle with the most, I think, yeah. probably. Oh, I struggled with that. Yes. When I lost all my work at the start of COVID, I went into domiciliary care thinking, I can't do this. Oh. But I had to be, I had bills to pay. I, my eldest said she couldn't sleep because she worked in a gym, lost yes. her job. Do you know what? It was the best thing I ever did. And it is a great career. But we have to sort of explain to people it's not just personal care. It's it's. So you're talking about attracting ever. people into yes. the profession. Um, yes. I'm pointing out, and it's a, a difficult for some people politically that that we didn't need to a couple of years ago. Uh, we we didn't really need to four or five years ago. There were people there who were doing it. How do we make the job more attractive? This is where I've misunderstood you slightly. Mm. We we because mm. the people leaving university are getting paid too much but the people who are apprentices are getting paid too little no they're not getting paid too much because they can't find the job they're asking for too much money because right. admittedly they spent three years studying so yes they're worth that but nurseries can't afford to pay somebody that's a level six when you've got a level three so this is specifically because... nurseries that we're talking about rather than care well, that's my field. no i know I i'm just clarifying that. i'm just clarifying, mm, I'm yeah, just clarifying. Just nurseries, so there's yeah. a shortage in nurseries as well is there oh, already Big time, I've got so many vacancies. Ridiculous. But also, a lot of people are wanting to work part-time. Hang on, I'm, I know I'm badgering the witness, but you, you were expecting that. <laughs> yes. uh, I, th th why have you got so many vacancies? In a sentence or two, right, if you I'll can. I'll tell you. Yeah. Because people are being very precious. They want to work part-time. They want to work 16 hours so it doesn't affect their benefits. Right. Um, they have got children themselves. I've got four children, and I was forever juggling. No, I, 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 I can't wait for your autobiography, but I'm just interested <laughs> at the moment. You know, I said, yeah. that, I said that to someone once, Karen, last year. I was being very rude, and he said, I sent you a copy last year. I self-published <laughs> it, and you never replied. So I'm very wary of telling people that I can't wait for their autobiographies. But I, I'm interested <laughs> in, because you say they want to keep their benefits. They might have children of their you've just said that so what yeah. what what is going to the, the, the vacancies are there and you believe the people are there but at the moment the people aren't prepared to fill the vacancies so what's going to change right. them I'm getting, I'm getting lots of applications yes i find them i talk to them they're very good yes and then they go i only want to work part-time i only want this i only want that yes Instead of somebody like myself, I've no, always again, again, I know you have, but I don't, you're doing it again. I don't want to talk. I, I, I yeah. just so they don't want to work in the in the no. terms that you describe and that you're offering. Yeah. yeah. And you're saying we yeah. should find a way of making them. Um. No, yes. We can't force somebody. Well, what are, are we going to do then? What are, What are we going to do then? And, and I need to remind you, and I know you're not, you're not here to talk about the B word, but everybody who voted for it thought yeah. that their lives were going to get better. Yeah. The idea that they're now going to be frog-marched into nurseries and forced to work 50-hour weeks is probably not what they yeah. had in mind. Maybe employers need to, it Go down to employers to make it more attractive, job sharing. Uh, a lot of nurseries don't want to do that, but okay. I think that would be great. That's but one possible to... solution, but, but it doesn't increase the number of available people, mm. does it? I mean, yes, going back to... You know, good old Pretty Patel. Yes. I think she's messed things up big Surely time, not. so she needs to go. Surely not. But somebody, yeah, that we can have good incentives to bring people over right. and to encourage them and say, look, we can offer you help 
regarding housing. We can. Well, that is the problem, isn't it? And I, I, I hope people don't think I forced you into that position because I can't no. see another solution to it except well, bringing back some of what we had before. Because if you were listen, if you were living in Czechoslovakia or, or Spain, <laughs> and you fancy, why are you laughing? It's perfectly possible. My mom came over during the war. There you go. Yeah, look at that. It's like I'm psychic, <laughs> isn't it? And obviously, coming over during the war is a very different yeah. um, proposition to what we're talking about mm-hmm. now. But you were thinking yeah. about coming over to, to work and possibly possibly to yeah. make a life and maybe you fell in love and you got married and you wanted to raise yeah. children that's a different and you would have been able to what we would mm-hmm. say now to somebody in prague would be you can come over and work for x years um but at the end of that period uh, but you won't ever fully belong you won't be a proper citizen you won't have any rights and we'll tell you when you have to leave well we need to turn that around because we're um, not that type of country we are now we're mate i hate to break it i hate to break it to you karen but that's exactly the type of country that we are now then we need to turn it around and as citizens oh. we need to be forceful and say no this is wrong well, I we agree. need to make people feel welcome look yeah. at the poor afghanistan refugees very educated why can't you know we be offered the, off them work and i'm sure they'll snap it up we've got doctors nurses all sorts, you know, different... I did a cheeky thing just before my holiday. I pointed out that if every single person that had crossed the English Channel in a dinghy in the last two years was to retrain as a lorry driver overnight, we'd still be about 80,000 short of what we need to have a fully functioning system. Karen, thank you. No, no, No criticisms from me for not having golden answers or answers other than the, the, the obvious, which is... <laughs> We've got to have some form of free movement of people, which means I'm interested in the invitation. So you came over here. You have made a life. You right up until 2016, you felt welcome and equal and valued. Would you come now? Oh, three, four, five, six, oh, six, oh, nine, seven, three. That's a question I'd love you to answer. Would you come now knowing what you know? There's a couple in Ireland who are separated now because of the the new rules you've got i think the wife is in the republic and the father is in northern ireland and they don't know whether they're ever going to be properly reunited and and the wife is a doctor by the way so would you come now oh three four five six oh six oh nine seven three and how do you fix a shortage of people you can't fix a shortage of people by increasing wages or giving people a porsche uh, when they start the job you can't there's a shortage of people we voted to get rid of them and they've gone. What are we going to do now? It's nice to be back at work. I'm very excited. Not as excited as Michael Gove was the other night in that Aberdeen nightclub, but, but, but moderately excited nonetheless. And, and I have, as ever, when I've had a little bit of time off, wrestled with the question of how do we have these conversations while recognising that the, 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 the ship of European Union membership has sailed. Um, and, of course, the ship of leaving the European Union is sinking. Uh, it was inevitable. There's no pleasure in being proved right. Quite the opposite, in fact. Never in my life have I wished so passionately to be proved wrong about something, but it's happening. Things will get a bit better. They won't be as good as they were before, but the least bad they are, the more people will claim vindication. You will soon have people saying, ha, you see, it's not that bad. We've only got shortages and more expensive things. There's still food in the shops. You can still, there's still turnips in the shop, but that's, that is what's going to happen next, probably in the next two years. People will be turning around and going, oh, I thought the world was going to end. Things are worse than they were before, but they're not that bad. Ha ha ha. And, and that's just nuts. But hey ho, that's, that's the era and the world, or the country at least, in which we live. But the, um, the shortage of staff, farmers also looking for special dispensation, special uh, uh, treatment. And that is currently the only available answer because uh, Karen, the last caller, and I, we know they're not going to bring back freedom and movement of people. It was the only thing left from Theresa May onwards, the only thing they could hold up and say, it's definitely worth doing because we'll be able to send them back where they came from. And I don't think they can reverse that politically. Not yet. I think they're going to have to, hopefully in my lifetime. But if they can't do that, what can they do? Oh three four five six oh six oh nine seven three. Answer: Special dispensations, temporary permits, fast track visas. Farmers are asking for it. Care homes are asking for it. Everybody's blooming asking for it. The hauliers are asking for it. I don't know that that would work. The story from the Telegraph that I mentioned to you, because um, people who encourage you to vote for Brexit clearly won't. The number of Turks seeking to come and work in the UK. To be clear, I've got no problem with it. I say, thank God, someone wants to come and work here. Uh, Because we bloody well need you. But Brexit, of course, that despicable poster that Dominic Cummings put out about Turkey. I think it was Cummings. 
um, being about to join the EU, and that was designed to spook you, and it clearly succeeded in many cases. Oh, my God, Turkish people coming here, that would be awful. The number of Turks seeking to come and work in the UK has more than quadrupled in a year as they seek to exploit the exodus of Europeans post-Brexit, official figures show. Now, that's in the Daily Telegraph. About the closest this country comes, certainly since Paul Dacre left the editor's chair at the Daily Mail, the Daily Telegraph is a Brexit fanzine. and uh, is uh, the closest you will come to a propaganda sheet in the British media. It pains me to say this, it was my late father's old newspaper, the Daily Telegraph. So when they're writing, they seek to exploit the exodus of Europeans post-Brexit, official figures show. I don't, I haven't read the whole article. I don't know whether it references the fact that a lot of people were persuaded to vote Brexit because they were terrified of Turkish people coming to this country. And I don't know how they're going to process the news that the figures have gone up fourfold. Might do that later in the week. Susanna is in St. Albans. Susanna, what would you like to say? Hi, James. Hello. Hi. Sorry, I'm nervous a bit. It's only, um, it's only me. Don't be nervous. <laughs> yeah, so I uh, I think there is no... Well, I, I don't think there is a, an answer to this, <laughs> really. No. Um, I have a cleaning business here, and uh, we were always struggling to find people to work. And um, this is not because we pay little money. We mm. pay really good money. Uh, it's just the mentality of the people. They don't want to do these jobs. They don't want to work for this amount of money because... And I did have this... Um, sorry, try to... No, you tell, yeah, you've got but, all the time you want, Susanna, seriously. Um, so, so when people are telling me, like, for example, let's say English people, when they're telling me that, yeah, but I can't pay my bills of that amount of money. Yes. And I, I always say, I do. Yes. <laughs> I pay my bills. I pay everything. I'm renting a house, you know, but I, it's true. I do have to work seven days a week to achieve <sighs> this. And this is So not what are easy. they doing in the meantime? The people who... Well, are they doing other jobs? I mean, the, 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 what, what are these people doing? Because some of them, if they... I mean, I guess you get some of your bills paid if you're unemployed, but you don't enjoy a lifestyle that would be comparable to somebody in full-time yeah. work well, yeah, it, it, it is it is but but the thing is that this is for, i can only talk about obviously this this is yeah. a hard this is hard work you know it's a proper physical work People so they'd rather do something else for the same money or they'd rather do something else full stop I, yes i yeah. think rather they just do something else um, and that's and the think... issue, isn't it? Because I, I see that in all sections of the service sector. And I think, I mean, you're very much in the service sector. I hesitate yeah. to use these words, but but people think the work is beneath them. Yeah, exactly. Right. This is what it is. And it's not just, not, not, I'm not talking about just British people. I mean, I'm Hungarian. No, and of course. I know Hungarian people who they saying to me when they come to actually apply for a job because they can't go anywhere else because they don't speak the language and yes. so this is something that they can do. The first thing loads of them are say that, oh yeah, I'm not planning to do this for too long. Sure. <laughs> and this is something, here's the answer for that, that, you know, that people, they just don't want to work, they don't want to do the work which is, makes their hands dirty, you know what I mean? So... I think, uh, and it's not about the money, you know, because um, as I said, we pay good good amounts and you can live on this money, you know, you can pay your, uh, your bills and everything. But as I said, um, myself, I'm working seven days a week to yeah. do this. And, and, I, and I, I don't think that's right for the record. I mean, I, it's your prerogative to do it, but people should be able to achieve a decent standard of living on, on, right. on, on 38 or 40 hours a week. Uh, the, the, what, yeah. What's the... What's going to happen next? Because, I mean, would you come now, do you think? Yes. No, you would still come. That's right. yes. In a way, that's good to know. But you're clearly quite exceptional doing your, your, your seven-day weeks and, and running your own company. The offer is a lot less attractive than it was. Do you, what's your status if you don't? Oh, man, look what the country's turned into. I, I ask a caller to my program what her, what her immigration status is. That's what they've done. Well, you're laughing. Well, I'm glad I you're laughing. I'm ashamed. I'm ashamed to be British when I have to ask you that question. You, you, you employ people. You work here. You live here. And I have to ask you what your immigration status is because yeah, I, I want to find I, I out. I've got a settled status, yeah. Right. Um, well, you wouldn't get that if you arrived here. tomorrow, would you? Sorry? You wouldn't get that if you arrived tomorrow. No. 
No, and obviously this is the one thing that um, because there are people, for example, from Hungary who would I know that they would be really hardworking and they would come here and they would do the job properly and but they just they don't want it anymore because you know we are not feeling outcome here anymore. No. It's crazy. Even if they say that we need, they, you know, even if people say that, oh yeah, we need, we need the work, we need to bring people here. Yes. But, yeah. Do this. Do 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 the dirty work. You and know, then, they need and then people. clear off, and then clear off, yeah. and, and don't think that you're going to enjoy the same rights as. Well, I hate to say this, but you're going to have fewer rights than an unemployed British person. Yeah. So you're you're a foreign worker on a special visa. You're going to have fewer rights and protections than an unemployed but I, I don't know maybe people voted for their children to, to to take up all of these jobs that they don't want to do i don't know i don't know susanna thank you for everything that you do a bit shaken by that i'm sure i've done that before but but it is a bit of a moment isn't it we're so caught up in coronavirus these new realities that fully haven't landed yet october is another big day for for import export changes and checks and, and things getting even stickier but I'm talking to a caller to my program. Susanna is kind enough to call me, clearly listens on a regular basis. And some of the answers to my questions will be changed by her immigration status. I might as well have asked to see her papers. Sorry, could I see your papers, please, before I decide what question to ask you next? Wow. Liz is in Crick Lane in Wiltshire. Liz, what would you like to say? On the farm. Hi, Jane. Down on the farm. Down on the farm, yes. Yeah, still here talking to you again. Um, yeah, I mean, for surprised us, you ever uh, get any work done. You're never off the phone, Liz. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I got my ears. I'll be seeing the whole time. Uh, Only your program, Jane. Only quite, your program. Uh, uh, right. um, the we we are having trouble with staff, um, and it's not. It was already here before Brexit, yes. actually. Um, this is not a new thing, um, and but now it's it's significantly worse. And um, interestingly, uh, the vet that used to come and do our TV testing, Greek, I mean, it's a really tough job, for yeah. that job. And he's gone, he went back to Greece before COVID um, because he didn't feel welcome here. Yeah. And um, now the government are making us test our animals more often every six months. Mm -hmm. So I don't know <laughs> how they're expecting this to happen um, because some before this, uh, change came in they only need to be in, you didn't have tb in some areas they only had to be tested every five years we've always been every 12 months right the area we're in yes so i don't know where they're in t anticipating all of these vets uh, are going to come from to do this work um so it's it's extraordinary so on the one hand they're taking tb very seriously and then on the other hand you know we've got this this uh, the headlines over Geronimo and um, that that they want. <laughs> this is the <laughs> alpaca. You'll, 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 yeah. you'll, you'll forgive me for being one of the rare corners of the British media that hasn't obsessed about the alpaca. But I am told that police officers. It's amazing. This breaking news. I think. Let me just check with the team. Is this breaking news? Police officers have arrived on the farm where Geronimo, the alpaca currently resides but but you, yeah. you you remind us that that's linked to tb it was usually you mentioned your greek vet spanish people are very um uh, overrepresented in that side of veterinary work in this country as well i, I know that yeah. there's that that's really exacerbated shortages as well how do we fix it how, how do we what do we do do we all have to sort of go forth and multiply well, that would be the farmer's response to the problem wouldn't it we just breed more <laughs> It's not. It's not fixable. No. Uh, we've got a top-heavy elderly population in yes. this country, um, and that is what the reality was before Brexit. It's why we always needed the immigration. Um, and after the financial crisis, we did have many more people coming from Spain and Greece because that's the whole idea of freedom of movement. If your country is going um, through a difficult time, you can move to another nation to get work. Um, and we've stopped ourselves from being able to do that um, and in, in, in this, this stage we're in a funny stage where where we are short of people and the government is saying well this is what you voted for britain so suck it up uh, and that's that's where we are i don't know how much longer people will put up with it i mean we've got food shortages being warned for schools and other institutions how how much pain will people actually think oh well we voted for it so we have to have it i don't know and well, I, no, nor do I. And you know, some people will never admit it. it, it, it um, 
part of their identity. It's not just a political choice. It's part of who they are. That's, that's the genius of Dominic Cummings' tactics to turn it into the first round of the culture war. Is it, It's part of who you are. Yes, we won. You lost. Get over it. And you sort of go, what did you win? What was the prize? Answer, food shortages. Answer, higher prices. Answer, uh, vacancies across the board in hospitality and catering. Pubs might be shut, I was reading at the weekend. They might not be able to get the beer into the pubs. Uh, yes, victory. I'll have a pint of sovereignty, please, landlord, and a, and a, and a, and a packet of blue passports. And it, I know I've been going on about it for a long time. Uh, and in many ways, coronavirus, tragically, has distracted us from uh, the, the burgeoning and inevitable realities. But the uh, old line of coming over here, taking our jobs, as Stephen Landudno points out, has assumed a rather new resonance, hasn't it? Coming over here, not, not coming over here, not taking our jobs. And look where that's left us. As far as I can tell, for the lorry industry, these fast track passes to get lorry drivers back wouldn't work anyway, as most of the European drivers I worked with had citizenship in the UK and could have stayed after Brexit. The reason most of the ones I knew went back home was because of the IR35 thing. The money for the industry just wasn't worth it. Now they can get similar wages in their home country and be there with their families. I was going to change professions after they stopped the IR35, but the wages have gone up. And even though I still don't get as much as when I was self-employed. Um, another lorry driver, you can see his, his fascinating thread, actually. I've just tweeted it if you want to have a look. He's just got um, turned up at work on the 29th of August, which is, what, two days ago? Uh, to find out he got a £7 per hour pay rise, a 40% increase almost overnight. Um, but he's not celebrating. He adds, uh, there are no drivers. Things are about to get a bit tasty. Completely unsustainable, of course. So guess what happens to prices next? And, and Tom, who tweets as the... Oh, he follows me. That's nice to see. Uh, who tweet? I think I'll follow him back. Let's see if we can get him on the show. Uh, he tweets as the lorryist. So at the lorryist um, has explained at length about what the problems are and indeed where the problems are have come from and and that that is the problem if you're writing an article for the daily express or, or you're phoning up the kind of radio station that doesn't expect you to be able to explain your position you might say oh it's great it's great the uh, uh the wages are going up it's great yeah that, yeah i read that it's in the express yeah but if you speak to people on the ground and a that means you'll be paying more for all your food when you voted for cheaper food that was the deal remember cheap cheap shoes for peasants and b it's unsustainable anyway, not because it's not, I mean, it's great to see people being paid more. It's why I'm a big fan of trade union membership. Fascinating to see how many Brexiters also really like trade unions all of a sudden, or at least what trade unions stand for. Perhaps I didn't realise. Seems likely. But it's not wages. You, you, you have a shortage of people. It's, we've turned off a tap. A tap of workers. And if we turn it back on again but with a constant threat that we're going to turn it off at any minute, then there is not going to be a queue of people wanting to, to jump through that. I just don't think there is. I, don't, I mean, there'd be still people. I mean, there, there's got to be a reason why Brexit has seen a fourfold rise in the number of Turks seeking work in the UK. But I suspect that has more to do with the standard of living outside the European Union in a country like Turkey than it does with the relative attractions of coming here from a European Union country. That was the thing about free movements, about single markets, about customs unions. Um, is that it's really attractive. It's really good for the citizens. It is. It is. I, mean, I think we might be the first electorate in history to vote to abolish our own freedoms. We talked about the Taliban a lot in the first hour. And if you lived there, you'd be terrified of having your freedoms taken away. I wonder how they look at us. You know, in, in, in Britain, they actually vote to have their freedoms taken away. They voted to have their own freedoms taken away, including arguably the most valuable freedom of all, which is the freedom to move, the freedom to work and love and live elsewhere. Well, they did what? They voted to... No, surely one of their enemies took it away from them. Surely an invading force marched up the mall and announced that they wouldn't be free to... No, they voted for it. They voted to have their own freedoms taken away. Do they realise it will apply to their children and their grandchildren? Yep, they wanted it. They wanted it all along. I'll read you a text. I mean, they're, they're just boring now, but they're still out there, obviously. I am glad these Hungarians no longer want to come here. They are not welcome and should go back. Brexit has been a success. And I know the massive majority of people who voted for it are going to be feeling horrible about the fact that you're now on the same team as this lad. But we did warn you. Keith, polish the tin. We did warn you. What did you think was going to happen? 
Anyway, that's not today's question. It's not time for mayor culpas and apologies, and I told you so. It is simply a question, how do you increase the number of people available for work in this country at this time? 0345 6060 973. I'll say that again. It's a clear question. How do we increase the number of people available for work in this country at this time? 0345 6060 973. We voted to chuck them out. We voted to send them home. They've gone home. What are we going to do about all the jobs they used to do? Peter's in Oxford. Peter, what would you like to say? Hello, Jim. Sorry again. Hello. Yeah, I mean, I agree with everything you said about free movement. I think that's the, in the long term, the only answer. I agree. It's a long, long and hard struggle to restore what we've lost. Um, I'm, I'm, you mentioned earlier Irish doctors, and I'm one. Yes. Um, I've, I've been a doctor in the NHS for many years. I've lived in the UK since 1982. Um, since the referendum for the first time, I wondered whether it's the right place for me. Um, and even though I've, as an Irish person, I have the right to travel um, really within not only the UK and Ireland, but also within the whole of Europe. But um, uh, I think many people like me have been tempted to um, return to their whole home countries, not because they have to, but because they're seeing around them a hostile environment. Mm. And they see people talking in a way they never talked before um, about how unwelcome, like your correspondent just now. Yes how welcome uh, people from other countries are. Now, you're quite right. I mean, Turkey and, and many other parts of the world are sending far more people to the UK than they did before the referendum. I mean, uh, net migration to the UK hasn't changed, really. Um, but the number coming from Europe has fallen by about 100,000 mm. and been made up by people from elsewhere because of that shortfall. I mean, um, if people voted to... Um, well, we've still got big to... shortages, though. I haven't got those exactly. numbers in front of me, but um, the people are coming yeah. in to do different things. They're not coming in to do the jobs that, so, I think I can say, me... that we need to be done. Well, exactly. And I feel really cross. I'll just yes. read out to you what the UK government's response to this was. And the Royal College Association and many others called for changes in visa regulations. They said the British people repeatedly vote to end, vote to end free movement and take back control, well, etc. Yeah. Employers should invest in our domestic workforce instead of relying on labour from abroad. Now, as a doctor, when, when, when I'm being told, and we're very, very short on the ground, as you know, yes. I'm regularly told by patients they can't get an appointment with a GP for weeks, and, and that's, right, that's yeah. not the GP's fault. It's quite simply the fact that uh, we have a severe shortage, and worsening shortage of doctors. And as a local, I'm constantly being in with the office of work. Um, it, it, it's really? good for me, yeah. but frankly, it's not, it's not something I want to see because it just reflects as a symptom of the severe shortage. And that's going to be the next chapter, isn't it? Is that we, yeah. we can expect the right-wing newspapers to start attacking GPs in the NHS well, for, for not being really, available, they, whereas they've created the environment in which there aren't enough doctors. The environment, exactly. So oh, the, the thing is this, that uh, when the government says we should train up more doctors and more lorry drivers uh, or whatever... Um, they have no idea of time scales. You know, if you if you open a new medical school now, in 2021, 22, they will go on stream as <coughs> as GPs approximately 2032, mm. and as as you know uh, specialists even later. And that's the time the kind of time scale you're talking about. Well, that's why I when keep mentioning Christmas. Shortage, I say I want some of these problems to yeah. be fixed by Christmas. What are we going to do? The, the word shortage. The government's answer is plant more trees. Now I ask you, it's the same kind of thinking. It's it's that mentality. And it's, it's the mentality that appears in the Conservative Manifesto. And they said, um, you know, the, the, the words they used was that by establishing immigration controls, ending freedom of movement, we'll, we'll be able to attract the high-skilled workers we need to contribute to our economy, etc. Um, there'll be fewer low-skilled migrants, and overall numbers will come down. This was, this was the aspiration that, under, that underlay this. Now, think about that. Yeah. Um, what, what they're saying is we want to actually it's meaningless. Um, control migration. Well, the, the short occupation visa scheme, which is what they, which is their tool for doing that, is a very very blunt instrument. They have no proposals at all to change anything on it for, for the next year, 2022. So you can't just say we're going to call, we're going to call HGV drivers a shortage a specialty because that's not how it works. No, and, 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 and they'll, they'll be, they'll, no, I know, I know, I know, and they'll be queuing up for it. And actually, the the fellow I mentioned who's detailing the reality of being a lorry driver is is pretty clear about it. Just being a you know a, a really tough gig, and it, it's the kind of job you do if you're doing it for a number of years. You're banking the money, and then you're moving on to do something else, or it suits you. This idea that there's a, an untapped reservoir of humanity in this country that's just waiting for the right opportunity, the right invitation, and the right training. And then they'll all sign up as lorry drivers is, is just ridiculous. But I guess it keeps the truth 
at bay for another day. Tom, thank you. P- uh, Peter, sorry, thank you. Um, here he is, Tom. It's hard work. The hours are long. It can be dirty, heavy, manual work. It's dangerous. It's complex. It's highly regulated. It's bad for your health. It's bad for your diet. It's bad for your family. It's bad for your social life. It's poorly paid per hour on average. And the cost of entry is high. Um, why aren't more people queuing up to do it? And if we do create an environment in which more people are prepared to do it because we make it more rewarding, then we all pay more for our food. Which, I, you know, I could live with that. But they probably should have explained that to you at the beginning when they were given the cheap shoes for peasants shtick. See, this is broken while we were talking about lorry drivers. More than 2,000 lorry drivers were fined for not having the right paperwork to enter Kent at the end of the Brexit transition period. I don't know, maybe that's a tangible benefit. It's a bit of a pain in the proverbials if you're a lorry driver, but we've raised £638,000 in fines as a result of bringing in uh, red tape to get out of our own country, to get lorry... <laughs> when does it end? Yes, we've, what did you do? We voted to abolish red tape. What happened? Uh, we brought in loads more. Um, and also, the few lorry drivers who were still doing the job got fined thousands of pounds for not being aware of what red tape they needed in order to drive out of their own country, which they could do without any trouble, completely freely, up until the beginning of this year. Well, what changed at the beginning of this year? Well, that's when the ramifications of that vote that we made to get rid of red tape kicked in. Don't worry, we're moving on to something else for now, but um, I suspect that the B word is going to be featuring rather more in our conversations moving forward than it has for the last year or so. Um, you'll remember my catchphrase, I hope, contempt for the con men, compassion for the con. And I mean that so sincerely. That's why I voted Brexit, my message is succinct. Don't let the great British memes become extinct. Don't let the great British memes become extinct. That's why I voted Brexit, I'm gonna put it bluntly. That's why I voted Brexit, we're not a multicultural country. That's why I voted Brexit, come on, join the hunt. You gotta love Nigel Farage, cause he's a proper British cunt.